Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Yesterday, I was over in Luke chapter 2, verses, say, uh, verse 8 through 14, and I was talking about what the angel decreed to the shepherds who were in the field, and I think I'm going to post a teaching I did on that a couple of years ago about who these shepherds really are, because I've heard so many wrong teachings about that, and I've researched this and studied it out in some Jewish literature. Uh, but anyway, let me keep going on this. In verse uh, 14, this is where all the other angels come and are singing and praising God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. Okay, this was God's gift, his son, to all of mankind, to the earth, the entire earth, was so that Jesus could come as a man and bring the kingdom of God back into the earth and reconcile all of us that would choose to follow Jesus and believe in Jesus back into the kingdom of God. And so that's what I taught on yesterday. But to, as I was ending, I, I said that we would do well if we could enter into looking at the Bible from a perspective that it is the Bible itself is about two kingdoms at war with one another. Did you know if we did that, if we would see the Bible in that light, and guys, look, I have never sat in a church that I've ever gone to and heard anybody teach about the two kingdoms that uh, God brought the kingdom of heaven as an extension to, into the earth through Adam, okay? And then Adam basically kicked the kingdom of God out of the earth and handed the earth over to the kingdom of darkness to the adversary. And uh, the adversary has had rule and reign in the earth because of Adam's rebellion. And then we see where Paul writes, he says that the last Adam, not the second, there won't be another what we call Adam. No, the last Adam, Jesus was born into the earth as a man, and he brought that kingdom of God back into the, to the earth legally. Now, if we would see uh, the Bible as two kingdoms at war, we would understand that God's goal is for his kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, to rule and reign in the earth just like it's ruling and reigning in heaven. Think about the Lord's Prayer. The first thing Jesus told the boys, pray like this. And so they uh, honor and exalt God the Father. And it, But he says, thy kingdom come. Okay, So if we can just see the Bible from a mindset of two kingdoms at war, Okay, uh, and I didn't learn this kingdom message until I started listening to Curry Blake and John G. Lake Ministries, I guess about four and a half years ago, guys. Uh, and it's sad that you can be a believer for 8, 10, 20, 30 years and never even realize that the entire Bible is about two kingdoms at war and Jesus came to translate and move people out of the kingdom of darkness back into the kingdom of God. That's what it was all about from the very beginning. The moment that Adam rebelled and gave away the earth to the enemy, God has been working through time and people to get his kingdom back into the earth. And now, once we become born again, we, as sons and daughters of God, just like Jesus, we are ministers of reconciliation. Our job, it's not to say a sinner's prayer so we get our ticket punched and we get to go to heaven. That is a false gospel, guys. It's a false gospel. What Jesus came was to bring the kingdom of God back into the earth, okay? Now, I want to show you this. Uh, in, I ta I've talk, taught on this in the past. John the Baptist, the first thing he starts talking about is the kingdom of God has arrived. Well, obviously, it wasn't here if it had to arrive. Then Jesus comes right behind John the Baptist, and he says, the kingdom of God has arrived. And as Jesus went, that's all he taught was the kingdom of God. He taught about it over and over and over again. And then when he would go places, he would say, the kingdom of God has come near to you today. He was saying, I am the carrier of the kingdom of God. Did you know that you are a carrier if you are born again? You are a carrier of the kingdom of God. Our jobs as a believer, 
We are supposed to be ministers of reconciliation, bringing people back into balance. You know, when I reconcile my bank account, I'm bringing it back down to where it agrees with each other. My What checks I've written uh, balance out with what amount of money the bank says I have in it. So I'm going to bring it back into balance with each other to make sure they match. And that's what the ministry of reconciliation we're supposed to be bringing people back into balance with the kingdom of god and by doing that we translate them out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son jesus okay so uh i want to talk about this just a little bit more today now yesterday i talked about the shepherds and the angels coming but and uh i'll probably repost a teaching i did about who these shepherds really were, because I hear so much wrong teaching about this, and I researched this and studied some Jewish literature, and I'd love for you to know about this. Uh, but what I want to talk about mostly today is I've been studying the kingdom of God in Matthew chapter 13, and this is the parable about the uh, sower and the seed. And, you know, Jesus explains that he's the sower, and the seed that he has brought to sow is the message of the kingdom of God. It's right there in our Bibles. And I want to talk about this. Uh, in verse 18, his uh, disciples ask, you know, well, actually in verse 10, he, they ask him why he teaches in parable. And he basically says that the average person has a dull heart. Their, their, their minds are clogged up, their ears are blocked, their eyes are blinded, and they will not receive the truth about the message of the kingdom of God. Unfortunately, we don't do a lot of teaching about the message of the kingdom of God. What we've done is we've turned the good news of the message of Jesus bringing the kingdom of God back into the earth. Okay, We have changed that to a false gospel of saying a sinner's prayer so you'll be forgiven and you get your ticket punched and you don't go to hell. And that's not what Jesus came to do. Jesus came to change people right here, right now, in the nasty now and now. He wants to change their heart and their mind so they live differently in this earth. Not live like the devil and go to heaven. Jesus wants people to be born again, born of his spirit. And they will walk out a different life now. And as they're walking in this earth... They've got the kingdom of God in them, pouring out the kingdom of God into the earth. They are acting as ministers of reconciliation, bringing people out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. But the only way that we can have fruit and fruit that remains is to understand the message of the kingdom. It's right here in this parable. I'm going to read this to you, and I'm starting in verse 18 of uh, Matthew chapter 13. And this is in red. Jesus said, Now you are ready to listen to the revelation of the parable of the sower and his seeds. The seed that fell on the beaten path represents the heart of the one who hears the message of the kingdom, but doesn't understand it. The adversary then comes and snatches it away what was sown into his heart. The seed sown on gravel represents the person who gladly hears the kingdom message, but his experience remains shallow. Shortly after he hears it, the troubles and persecutions come because the kingdom message he's received. Then he quickly falls away for the truth didn't sink in deep into his heart. The seed sown among weeds represents the person who receives the message, but all of life's busy distractions, his divided heart, his ambition for wealth, that's called living in the world, result in suffocating the kingdom message and prevent him from being bearing spiritual fruit. Now here's the good one. This is the good soil right here, the good heart. As for the seed, that seed again is the message of the kingdom of God. For the seed that fell upon good, rich soil, it represents the hearts of people who hear and fully embrace the message of heaven's kingdom realm. Their lives bear good fruit. Some yield a harvest of 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as was sown. Now, I need to stop right here and tell you, 
This is not about putting money in an offering plate and asking God to multiply that money. That is a manipulation of the scripture. Jesus himself and Red said that this parable was about the seed and the sower. And that message is about the kingdom of God. That's what he came to sow was the message of the kingdom. He was not here to tell you to double down your bets on your offerings and, and it's going to work like the stock market so you can multiply and make millions and millions of dollars and get filthy rich. Uh, no, that is th this scripture is totally 100% mixed in with some more parables that are nothing but teachings about the kingdom of of God, and that is the message that Jesus brought, that little old baby that was born in a manger to the Virgin Mary, brought the kingdom of God legally back into the earth. He was the last Adam. The first Adam had the kingdom of God, and he rebelled, and the kingdom of God got shut out of the earth, and the adversary had his kingdom here and ruled and reigned over mankind and over the earth. Jesus comes legally into the earth as a man bringing God's kingdom back into this earth, okay? And he's, uh, so let me go ahead and finish reading this and I'll sign off for the day. But I do know that there's somebody out here that needs to hear this. I was a believer for many years and did not hear the message of the kingdom of God. Uh, and that's what Jesus came to do was bring the kingdom of God back into the earth. Now, I want to add this real quick. At the end of the Bible, I said we need to see the whole Bible as two kingdoms at war. Did you know in Revelation 21, the new heavens and earth come down and Jesus comes to rule on the earth as king over the earth, okay? And he, the kingdom of God, will rule this earth. And you know what? I want to just play on the right team all along. I don't want to do a deathbed uh salvation prayer hoping that I can get in by the skin of my teeth. No, I want to rule and reign with Jesus in the earth today, right now. I want to live above the world. I want to walk in the kingdom. Jesus came to put the kingdom of God in us right now, here in the nasty now and now. Not so we can suffer and have a hard life now, but that we would rule and reign in his kingdom now translating lost people over into the kingdom of light, getting them out of the kingdom of darkness. It's God's will that all men would come to him and none would perish, okay? So let's go ahead, and I'm going to wrap this up, I think. I've got lots of great little footnotes here from the Passion Translation, and I do want you to know that uh, I, I, I really love to teach about the kingdom of God. Out of all the things that I teach, I like to teach on... Uh, us being sons and daughters of God, us actually being born again, not saying some sinner's prayer, but actually having a lifetime change by getting his spirit in us and us being born again. The baptism of Holy Spirit that gives us the power we need to walk above the world and not down under the circumstances that we face in the world. And I love to talk about the kingdom of God because that is exactly what Jesus taught and preached everywhere he went all through the Gospels. Well, guys, I'm going to sign off today. I love you, and I'll see you again right here. Bye-bye.